I'd like to call the order of the Planning Commission meeting for December 7th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Please uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Uh, attendance roll call. Commissioner Graff. Here. Commissioner Oliver. Here. Alderman Madden. Here. Commissioner Gazzano. Commissioner Buckmaster. Here. Commissioner Bartlett. Here. Mary mm -hmm. Pitfalski. Present. Planner Trace Bitowski. Here. All right, we have a quorum. Statement of public notice. The agenda was posted and distributed to all news media requesting notification in accordance with the open meeting laws on Friday, December 3rd. Thank you. Approval of the minutes from November 2nd. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Those pass unanimously. Public hearing. Public hearing for Carrie, is it Schnick, of, Schnick of Colts Canine Club LLC requesting a conditional use grant for the purpose of allowing a dog kennel located at South 83 West 18430 Saturn Drive, tax key number 2223.001. So this request uh, tonight is for the Colts Canyon Club, as the mayor mentioned. They're seeking approval specifically in front of the plan commission for overnight boarding of dogs within two possible separate units within the building. Um, one of them, I believe, is currently leased and one is a potential lease. So the approval more so stands with the, with the building and the, and the business name. So units aren't as really a specific concern. Um, as far as the number of dogs, um, that if both units are able to be leased, they're asking for a maximum of 20 for dogs to be boarded overnight and specifically this is for kenneling so overnight boarding um, 20 in one unit four in the other unit for overnight and uh, if they are only in their existing unit that would allow them a maximum of 14 dogs overnight and within the m2 zoning district which they're located in um, any kind of animal kenneling uh, overnight is allowed subject to this conditional use grant, which we're here for tonight. Their general operations um, are training and such, and that specifically doesn't need any kind of special approval. Um, as part of this proposal, there also is the ability and option uh, for the applicant to do some small outdoor fencing areas. Uh, these areas would be for the dogs to release themselves, obviously. Um, the intent from what we've heard isn't really just to let the dogs be out there and, and bark outside all day or anything, not meant to be just like an outside play yard, but more so a relieving area. Uh, there is some, I think, limited training done outdoors when weather permits, which isn't a big deal, um, as long as there's no nuisance with the neighborhood or anything like that. Otherwise, the site itself will remain predominantly the same. The use is going to be predominantly indoors. Uh, so yeah, that's what the hearing would be about tonight. All right. So anyone that would like to be heard on this item, please step forward if you are. State your name and address. Form a single file line. Hi, Terry. I'm the chair of the Canning Club. I just want to kind of add a little bit because it wasn't necessarily specified in there. Is that we do some Wait, in board. Wait, is the microphone Sorry. on? Yeah. Oh, you, is it? Okay. Yeah, okay. We do do some in-board train there, or we would like to. We work with very difficult cases. And a matter of fact, we've saved so far, not since I found out I needed the conditional use grant, but we've saved so far eight dogs' lives who would have been put down. One most recently who um, had an incident where they accidentally were put in a bad situation. They ended up biting another dog and biting a human. This dog shows zero signs of aggression, has been successfully rehabilitated and adopted out and is doing phenomenal. I actually work with one of the Muskego police officers here with his personal dog too. So this provides us that opportunity to work with dogs who wouldn't necessarily be alive today if it wasn't for the fact that they needed a safe place to learn their boundaries and their, their resources and how to be a dog. So a lot of the dogs that I work with, I work with Upper Midwest Great Dane Rescue, I work with Texas Rescue Riders, I work with Wisconsin, Minnesota Great Dane Rescue, and some of the shelters are now reaching out to us for either dogs that have not had the training that they really need, and once they have had that training, they are able to be adopted out successfully. We would never put a dog that's a danger into the community, um, but other than that, we work with these dogs and we save their lives. And I really think it's very, very important to have those research resources out there. A lot of the training facilities that are out there now are purely positive and they won't touch these dogs. So these dogs' end result would end up being put down if it wasn't for us. 
I have all positive reviews. The training facility is clean daily, um, disinfected daily. We have three group classes at night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday now. Um, I truly love what I do and I love the clients that I work with. All right. And the outdoor potty area is strictly for pottying. Sure. Right now we're using the grass out front. Dogs are not left outside. I don't want to create any obscene issues or cause any problems here. We like the community. We like being <coughs> in Muskego. Um, we actually, I live in Waukesha. We came to Muskego because of the area and the neighborhood and just the welcoming of the community, the community out here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else would like to be heard in this item? Hearing none, I will declare this public hearing closed. This item will be brought up under new business for further discussion. Um, moving on to old business for deferral resolution PC 056 2021 approval of an annual review for a fry auto located at West Loomis Road. Adam, you want to just give a quick update? Yeah, so um, as a reminder from last time, we are at the point where we decided to issue a citation. Um, I think it it worked so far in a sense of we've had already engaging and progressing conversations with Mr. Fry. Um, he did provide us um, a very informal, but a lease for that property that's across the street from him where he used to be located, that that owner is amicable to um, leasing him a good portion of the lot to fence to help with some of the storage needs. Um, so I've had some meetings with him. He's talked with the attorney and basically at the court level, we he had his first appearance. We basically said three months. You have three months right now as the next milestone to put together the detailed plans, get us a formal lease, you know, have a survey or engage, get it all surveyed, basically start putting together a plan that within the next three months will either be in front of you or scheduled to be in front of you. So in about three or four months, you guys should be able to see what he's proposing because you'll have to approve it. Um, and then we're going to just keep this on the agenda as a deferred item until he gets to that next stage rather than approve it and bring something back or deny and bring something back. So we would need, I think, a motion and a, um, and a second to, to defer it again, I believe. Move to defer. Second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's deferred unanimously. Thank you. Moving on to new business for consideration. P uh, resolution PC 067-2021. Approval of a conditional use grant for Carrie Shinnick for of Colts Canine Club LLC located on Saturn Drive. Yeah, and I have nothing else I really need to add. So um, we need to get on the floor. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, make a motion. Move the, to approve. I'll second then. All right, thank you. <laughs> now you can go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, so the resolution is really straightforward. Like I said, we're not really have any concerns. Um, the only thing we have noted in there, and I'm not expecting this to be an issue, but it's obviously just to try to protect everyone, that if there would ever become any noise concerns with dogs outside and or smell issues with things not being cleaned up, once again, we're not expecting it. We just want to make sure we're covering the what ifs. That would just cause us to become brought back to be discussed further. But other than that, we think this would be a great fit for the community. So Sounds like they are offering great services and a lot of happy customers so far. So we hope that continues to be successful. Um, question. So this, the conditional use go with the whole building, even though they're not. Technically, it's filed against the tax key number, which is the whole building. But okay. like if someone else came in and because it's like we, we were very clear on dog specific numbers, um, if someone comes in like the other end of the building wanted to do this, they technically would have to seek their own CUG. Um, but if this user were to leave the building and someone wanted to go to their same spots and do this same thing, that would be allowable. Unless we maybe put a provision in if we wanted, it, we could do like an annual review or we could say that if this specific applicant vacates the space, as part of them vacating, they're giving this up, meaning we would go through the process to revocate, not under bad terms, but you know the CUG, to make sure that someone couldn't just do it without further approval. Any comments or questions? Just to verify, there won't be any training done in this area outside, correct? There, there will not be training done in this area? In the outside areas you're asking about? Um, so we do training, walking training, oh, sorry, here. around yeah. the neighborhoods. We have come over here and done some training um, for all dogs are on leashes, nobody's off leash. There aren't any risks as, as far as anybody getting loose or anything like that. So we do do some outside training, but not in the parking lot. We do it more in the community. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Hearing what, what consideration do we are we responsible for relative to the neighbors? The neighbors being the units adjacent to this. 
I mean, the only thing I think that would really apply, and that's kind of when we put the provision about smell or sound, would be, you know, nuisance. Um, the name, this, the landlord was notified of this, I believe, as well as I know some adjacent businesses. One adjacent business called with some questions, but once they heard what was being proposed, they were very happy with it. Sure. Hence why they're not here tonight, I believe. So, um, I mean, just like anything, if something becomes a nuisance, whether it's in a resolution or not, it always has the ability to be dealt with as long as there's proper complaints filed. So I guess that would be the answer to that. And thus the term conditional use. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Moving on to resolution PC 068-2021, approval of a revised preliminary plot for uh, Mallard Reserve subdivision located at Pregel Drive and Durham Drive, tax key numbers 2211.996.002 and 2211.997. I'll second. Discussion? Uh, so this proposal here is um, a mere formality. There was really just one area of this plat that was altered. Um, kind of the northeast corner of the plat um, had an access point off of Durham Drive. And there's always has been and still will be two access points off of Pregel Drive. Um, as part of the construction plan review that's actively occurring for this site, there was some questions relating to safety, visibility, and just kind of a lot of congestion and possible even pedestrian safety as it relates to the access that was proposed on Durham. You know, so the Durham access point being in the far northeast corner of the site, if you're familiar with Durham, there's kind of a crest of the hill just northwest of there, which doesn't create for you know easy sight lines and things. So between the sight line concern there, and then there's a ton of utilities and underground issues. There's a um, pedestrian trail on the opposite side of the road that's kind of tight to the road. There's some concerns with ditching there and in combination of all the utilities between working with the developer, the developer's engineering team and, and engineering staff, we kind of all were in consensus that when the proposal was made, what if we, what if we eliminate that access point? Um, as long as the developer was okay with it, at staff level, the engineering department, public uh, works department in planning didn't have any issues with that. In fact, it creates some more marketability for some of the lots in that area. And since there's still two developments, uh, excuse me, two access points on Depregal, we don't foresee any additional safety concerns. You know, it meets all of our requirements for call to sack length and stuff like that. So the reapproval is really just formalizing the idea of removing the Durham access, which we think is being done for safety and we think it's a very successful safety measure. Mm -hmm. I agree. Nice better application. Yeah, and the same lot count. Um, there's meeting all the minimums that they agreed to, so there's nothing that would be a non-compliance issue here. No issue. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Miscellaneous business. <laughs> or has it? There's going to be a discussion. <laughs> <Or> comments. <clears throat> so so my... my uh, Discussion or question is just in, re, in relationship to uh, the pedestrian pass in, in the city and uh, Parks and Recs Department. They had that plan um, where it's set out that basically from like uh, 2000, uh, I think it was like 17 to 21, there's a basic concept of pedestrian pass. Um, as I've noted, as as uh, subdivisions have come in, right, they typically um, implement those those uh, paths. It looks like, right, and that's predicated, I assume, by our our um, department, uh, street and public works. Um, in relationship to the uh, the proposal that's being planned for the subdivision um, over on College Avenue. Uh, in the preliminaries, that wasn't in there, but I assume once staff goes through and reviews that, will they review that against that? I've had uh, two neighbors in the area ask about whether or not paths will be implemented connecting the park and uh, following that, that park and rec uh, plan. So for Kirkland Crossing, they do have on the preliminary plat was a connection between the park and their development. So that's one thing we like to do is connect the development to the park. We're not doing internal streets. It's not typical, and I won't say there's no subdivisions that have this, but it's very untypical to have a trail on a subdivision street because they're meant to be lower speed. You know, having the pedestrians on them is something that's not normally discouraged. Um, when it comes to the more major streets like Martin, um, 
we we don't have the ability to make a developer do an improvement outside the frontage of their plat. So like on Martin, they could we couldn't say go all the way down to the east on Martin to the next trail connection because that's they don't own all that frontage. Um, if there was part of a bigger trail plan that the city was agreeing to go forward with, we could have them do their portion. Now, in the case of like Martin, that's very limited frontage. Um, and that plan that you speak of is in the active process of being updated. As you said, it goes to 2021. So the um, public works and development director, as well as park staff is working on that plan as a whole, doing an update as we speak. Okay. And that would eventually come in front of you guys too. So the idea of the general plan being updated will become in front of you. But, you know, if there's specifics for like that neighborhood, like you said, it would depend on what we're looking at. It may not come back again, depending because as part of our preliminary plat, we usually bring up if there are recommendations specifically related to that. Because they have so little frontage on Martin, there's not much to make them do. Part of that plan also included college with a future path along college. So um, Martin was specifically where I got the two questions mm -hmm. uh, from, from neighbors. But I did note on college and that planning, it does show a connection from the park up to uh, Gingerbread House, basically up to the trail mm -hmm. there. So yeah, I didn't see that in the plan, and I don't even see the space allocated for it when I looked back on that. Yeah, and depending on what kind of priority it's identified in the plan as, kind of depends on what weight it has. If it's listed as distant priority, a lot of those may never happen. If it's listed as, I think they'd give them like priority like one through five or something. You know, the higher the priority, the more likely it's going to happen. But if it's distant. Uh, you know, we, as, as much as we don't want disconnected trail segments everywhere, because we couldn't have them go all the way to college, we could just do their frontage. Um, yeah, that's something I guess that could be looked at further. And, you know, normally it's something we like to talk about at the pre plat stage. In my time here, in a path along college would probably be a county project. We've never heard the county actually express any interest in doing that. I could be wrong. Um, so I think a college trail would be super unlikely because they'd probably have to buy a ton of land to do such. Um, even though they might have frontage here, you know, other lots down the road similar to yours and neighboring, you know, if there's not space for it, where are they going to go with it? Particularly mm -hmm. me personally, mine has already been acquired, but I am. Yeah. One, and there are some, that I'm one of the only ones that's been acquired on that. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, yeah. I, relative to that. And I, obviously we have a new subdivision coming in and I'm looking at it going, um, if that's in the plans, we never addressed it. So, and I know we still would have a chance to. So I guess that's why I wanted to bring it up tonight and, and get it in the forefront now. And, and also noting that that parks plan only goes to 2021 and the city's moving a little bit faster development wise maybe than that plan because that area wasn't planned to be developed, you know, so, so, so some, so, you know, things are moving a little incrementally faster and you just see it coming together and you realize if that doesn't happen now, it, it may never happen. So, yeah, I mean, in, as far as, Usually if it's a longer right away, the normal, it has, normally they happen in the normal right away dedication. We normally don't dedicate additional land because of the trail. We have to follow what our master right of way width map is. So on college, they are dedicating them the maximum width we can make them dedicate already. So in theory, there should be space if we ever were to do, uh, you know, off road, uh, off road trail, like our trails typically are, there should be land for it. We normally don't have it cut into the lot or development spaces. Most developers, I think, would express some pretty significant opposition to that. 99% um, of the trails that are out there are in public right away. Okay. So when the so <clears throat> have we had any of these developments um, bear the cost of, of these trail systems? They have. The, we, we could along their frontage. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So um, I can think of some that we, yeah, I mean, if yeah, along Durham, along Copper Oaks, along, I was but, thinking of you know, like Copper Oaks, they just, you know, they have their one little section that would have been their cost. Yeah. Um, and it was and, a trail to nowhere and still, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, part of planning is to consider that, I guess. I, so, I, so that's why I, I can tell it you the alderman in that district has asked to have, that area looked at. So it will probably be going to parks and conservation for discussion and depending on what happens there, if it gets put on the capital for the alderman to consider as a whole for as a capital project in the future, um, that's something. But I can also tell you there's like two other areas that people are asking for trails and in other aldermanic districts. And realistically, and from the cost standpoint, I don't see almost any of them happening just because of the pure cost. And I'm just you know, trying to tell you the realities of financing sure. on it. So I think as we move forward, you're going to see more and more people in our community kind of push for that, whether they Possibly. bear the cost in taxes or not. I, I just think it's something that 
as the community grows and you get more and more houses, it's kind of a natural thing. And it's not very walkable. Our community isn't very walkable and, and you know, or bikeable, you know, whatever, <laughs> however you want to put it. But um, it's just something that's going to start. And yeah, there's people are going to be opposed to it. And there's going to be people that, that, that strongly want it. I just think it's something that, you know, even if we kick the can down the road here a little bit longer, it's going to start to push. I, I mean, 10 years ago, I don't think you had people even really raising this much, but it just seems like it becomes more and more of a topic now. So I don't know what others are experiencing, but that's just me. So I wanted to bring it up. So, Fair enough. Yeah, I think the updates of that plan will help bring some of this yeah, and to we the can't table. Get too far into tonight. It was more information. Probably went a little further in discussion than we should. But yeah, thanks for the update. And um, like I said, follow it through park and conservation. Um, that plan should be up is being updated as we speak. Uh, the comp plan itself, um, that revision that we're doing, um, I would guess first part of next year we'll have it out. Um, so just kind of follow through from there. Anything else? Yep. Hearing none, a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned at 622. Thank you.